future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Thank you for being. Boulevard. Life is a banquet, and most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, coming at you from Sunset Gower Studios in the heart of Hollywood, where I drink with your favorite celebrities, and we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, and that's about it. So pop a court, pour a glass, lean back, and enjoy On the Rocks, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Oh, my Lord, it is going to be a bumpy night, I would tell you. Whew, whew. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a little too hot for, for Miss Candle. Kurt, if you could turn, yeah. you could turn you're, me down a little bit. You're, you're hot. No, I'm very hot. Thank hot. you, Karen, for noticing. It's, it's right. Nobody else <laughs> notices how hot I am. It's my Latino-ness. It's I'm, coming it's out. It's the photo behind you. I yes, mean, it's distracting. My, my younger brother, yes. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen and in-betweeners, I am your host for tonight. We're going to class it up today. You know, we, we only yes. bring you the best of the best. I'm so excited for today's show. Um, I don't even know where to begin. You, you know, put a mixer in your cocktail. That's how excited yes, you usually are. It's, it's Normally just, it's just straight. Yeah, but I, I, I want to be sentient for like the end of the show. Right. For once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Here, here we go. Um, you know, usually we have a small crowd. Tonight we're surrounded by like over a thousand men. <laughs> it's like a Friday night for me. <laughs> we're, we're surrounded by some extreme talent right now some in this room. Some extreme talent. Um, our, our guest of honor is uh, the, uh, named the Man of a Thousand Voices by, uh, 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 nicknamed for the years, years. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Fangirling. You're fangirling. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Finally, a book has come out. Uh, we have Mr. Rich Little. Uh, the impressionist, comedian, uh, entertainer, uh, friend of the stars, sketch artist, sketch uh, sketch artist, yes, yes, um, has written a tell-all. Finally, little by little, people I've known and been. Uh, mine is act. That's funny. He stole it from me. Mine is people I've known and been with. So oh, he stole it from you. <laughs> okay. he, he, he totally stole it. <laughs> <laughs> We're celebrating a man uh, whose career. Uh, I mean, just to name names. Sure, uh, name them. Uh, uh, Judy Garland, George Burns, uh, Jack Benny, Cary Grant, Bing Crosby, Ed Sullivan, Dean Martin K- does the best Carol Channing. I thought I. Did the best Carol Channing? No. Uh, Gregory Peck, Robert Goulet, Orson Welles, John Wayne, Paul Lind. Interesting. Johnny Carson, Frank Sinatra. Just to name a few. Plus all the presidents. Right. Presidents you like, presidents you don't like. Oh, God, I hope Well, it's said to be coming. over 200 different, you know, uh, impressions, and we're hoping to get to some of them today. Just amazing. And some of the stories in the book, stories that I didn't even know, and you know I'm a huge fan of classic Hollywood. Um, so we're going to, we have this evening to talk about some of these stars uh, doing impressions and uh, just celebrating the man that is Rich Little. Rich Little, it's funny because he's got a lot of talent. No, no, mm. nothing. Okay. Wah, wah. Almost like a Kirk kind of pun right there. <laughs> <Yes>. you <know? laughs> Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Kurt. It's like when Joanne Worley brought her own crickets in. Thank you, Joanne Worley, for my glass, by the way. She gave me this on the rocks glass. Maybe she'll call in again. She called in last week. I think she was. Boop, boop. Oh, okay. No, she wasn't. <laughs> she doesn't drink anymore. Um, so usually, uh, as usual, I'm surrounded by the men of On the Rocks. Of course, Kurt, our engineer that makes us sound good and look good. How are you, Kurt? I- I'm doing good. Thank you. Thanks for dressing up again. Well, I, you know how, <laughs> how I do it. Does your wife even see you when you leave the house? Like, she lets you leave this way? <laughs> yeah, she saw me this Does morning. Does she think you work at, like, an auto garage? Like, what's happening? Well, I mean, this has got a skull on it and everything. It, it looks nice. Mm-hmm. It's modern. Yeah. <laughs> Did you wear makeup tonight? <laughs> I'm not into that kind of thing. I would fire your makeup artist if that was true. I've got enough on for both of (laughs) us. I mean, we're good. We're good. Maybe it's Maybelline. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Kurt, as usual, uh, you know, straight people need a voice in entertainment too. Can you please give us your pun for the night? Uh, I I want to apologize to our guest, by the way. (laughs) You know, it really concerns me over how people are running into mirrors every now and then. They really need to watch themselves. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. I can't. Check. Check. You are not allowed yes. to laugh at him. No, <laughs> no, it's, it was no, a great no, Charlene. <laughs> Sorry, it was funny. Um, our our guest co-host uh, for tonight is is such a special woman to me. And talk about somebody else that has walked among the legend is a legend herself. Rumor has it uh, uh, she's writing her own memoirs. We have Miss Karen Cadle uh, from Karen Cadle International. Literally has rubbed. Is elbows. that rumor true? C- can we buy into that, that rumor is that you're writing your own memoir? Yes, you can. Yeah. Yes. We've got confirmation. Yes. We're good. Yes, oh, God. I can't wait. She's met a lot of stars. Yes, I hope I she has have. a chapter on you, and I hope it's a tell-all. Like I want, I want saucy, <laughs> saucy stories. Gossip. Gossip. 
Um, Karen Cadle has literally uh, become not just you know directing and producing, but has become friends with uh, Audrey Hepburn, Joan Fontaine. The, the list of people that you, Day, you can Taylor. probably call goes on and on and you on. Actually and had on. A, I actually a, printed it out um, just to like name a few okay, names. Go ahead, goes, okay, go ahead, if you must. Okay, Her so. friends are all deceased. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, sweetie, I'm a friend too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, this list is, uh, yeah, it, it's it's insane. Dick Van Dyke and Penny Marshall and Terry Gard and Rip Thorn, Bo Derek, Burt Reynolds, Dr- wow. Richard Dreyfus, Jerry Lewis, Tippi Hedren, Bill Daly, Joan Collins, Donna Mill. I mean, it, it, it goes on it goes on and on and on and on yeah. and that Who is something the nicest one you've ever worked with that's a great that's question a good qu- i could tell you the nastiest uh, but you're one of them nasty? the nastiest no no <laughs> the nicest the nicest well that went south real fast apology to our sponsors check please yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i would have to say uh, the most enchanting uh, was audrey for Aww. me and you the have nicest beautiful stories about Audrey. I have Aww. well you can't have anything but beautiful but I have a funny story about Audrey a just surprising story about Audrey but I would have to say she was extraordinarily nice dear well you are uh, as, you as, as well never met Audrey but you My can goodness. tell by looking at yeah. her that she had to be a nice person yeah she was, she was just well, always look a what class she act. did look she would look look what she did for children yeah yes. no Incredible. exactly yep Africa. she she basically uh, I don't want to say it but she actually like died for children because she should never have made the last trip oh of course the doctor not. said don't do it and she said i have to and oh, really? she did and then she passed away oh. yeah she let it go too long yeah oh. but uh, she was enchanting uh, but you are an amazing woman uh and you have brought such greatness to the show uh mr Thank little you. shirley jones uh no, i brought lots of Bud stars Ross. tonight yes yeah I even bought the presidents. I brought everybody tonight. Well, I hope you know, under special, when I say notable celebrity appearances, I'm putting all your voices down. I'll be like, wow, how did Jimmy Stewart do that? <laughs> like, I'll tell you. <laughs> the magic of Hollywood. Um, and as usual, I'm also surrounded by, by our, Hi, our, re- our resident socialite, Eric Restivo. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming back week after week. <laughs> I'm glad to be here week after week. Uh, has anything? Was there anything crazy that happened to you this week that was well, different than last week? Well, uh, yes, I have something ridiculous to talk about. But first, you have to give us our, our hashtag. Oh, my God. So, yeah, every week we do. Um, how can I forget? We do a hashtag for the we, show. We are starstruck. We have this all outlined, but we are, we are starstruck. Yeah, I'll be so, but our hashtag for the day uh, in honor of your book is little by little. So all of our listeners and viewers right now, if you have any questions attached to the show or for any of our guests just hashtag little by little and by the end of the show we should have a cultivated page and it will be really cool awesome little by little and if it comes up in conversation we have to take a sip of something whether it's dr pepper water or yes (laughs) or or (laughs) your juice (laughs) juice your juice yes liquid curd sweetie all right um and then joining us just last minute surprise uh you know we usually have live performances my friend for so many years charlene modeste is here in the house in the house literally like called me two two days ago and said oh i'm gonna no, be in I, LA. Didn't, I didn't call i just sent a text oh just a text <laughs> i was like ah uh, you are performing uh if you're performing for us tonight i'm so excited uh we have been friends for so long yeah so long it started long? out uh long? how long ago was women of brewster place Goodness, um, I mean, when you say it's a single-digit number, when you, you say so long, you might I think, think it's seven years, years though. But something like that. I know the drama that's, that's lo- behind the hey, so long in gay like years. Like, yeah. That's a long time because you know <laughs> <laughs> we're over people after like two years, so it, it's it's just a miracle. But you you did a musical, <laughs> an amazing musical that I'm surprised is not done more, probably because every person has to be a powerhouse. It was Women of Brewster Place. It was the musical. one of the most magical experiences ever. It was directed beautifully, and I was around like a cast of just amazing women. I and we're friends. I mean, we're friends for life. You know, like when you're in the theater, or you you get together for these intense relationships for a short while, and then it's new family. So it was an amazing experience. I loved it, and I love them still. Hey, y'all. <laughs> well, you know, I could barely watch a three-hour movie without you know. I have like entertainment ADD. It's like. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Not with women of Brewster Place. I saw this on Record. In fact, we have a picture. I I actually crashed your cast party, and I have uh, I'm, I'm holding up did. seven. I um I saw the show seven <laughs> times. 
And you talk to us after the show. Oh, no, I stopped you. You said I stopped. (laughs) Because I I just couldn't. It was such a magical experience. It was an intimate space. But from the minute it started, the music is so beautiful. The acting was phenomenal. Um, You women, it was one of the most powerful ensembles I've I've ever seen in my life. Um, And so you and I became friends because you're like, oh, he's either going to become a stalker or a friend. He won't go away. He won't go away. (laughs) Um, And then I went to New York. Was it was it two years ago or one year ago? I think it was two years ago. I, I flew into New York for one night only to see Patty Lapone. I had to. Whoa. Yeah. Who also has a restraining order against him <laughs> after yes. that one night. Go figure. Watch out, Rich. You're going to have a restraining order on me in no time. <laughs> Vegas is going to be on the lookout. I was like, no, not allowed. <laughs> well, I'm not allowed in Vegas for many reasons, but still. Um, but... Um, uh, what, what was I saying? You were in New York. New York. New York. You were in New York. Right. In New York. Yes. Patty Lapone. Patty Lapone. And I was. I had to fly back early the next day, and I was just gonna see see her perform, and that's it. And then you happened to be in New York, living in New York, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, I could meet you for a little bit after. <laughs> It was like what four thirty five in the morning. The, we closed the bar and then had nerve to go like foraging for pizza <laughs> in the middle of the night and had an argument. He's like, "That's a yucky pizza. I want New York pizza." I was like, "Well, you're in New York and everyone else is closed, <laughs> so here it is." Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, we ended up dancing on a box somewhere. Uh, but you are one of the most wildly talented people I know. Your music, your songwriting ability, um, your voice. You capture, and what tonight is about, it's a celebration of entertainment from classic to new, and your voice captures all that. I've heard. It's a celebration I, of voice, yes, really. Yeah, yeah, actually. yeah. I've heard you sing Etta James. I've heard you sing uh, Contemporary. You really just master everything. What I love about you is your spirit as well. Um, and we're, so we're, we're going to tell a funny story. I think it's funny because you and I, we always bring humor to everything. It's yes. been a rough couple of years for both of us in, in many ways. Um, but one of my favorite things you've ever said is Baby Craven It. <laughs> So, ha- I mean, that's just one of my, and people look like, what are you saying when, when I, like, Facebook post, baby craving it? It's because you, unfortunately, you you, you have some, some tumors right now. They're benign. Don't get uh, too alarmed. They're all benign I like tumors. to make everything dr- dramatic, yeah. you see. Yeah. But, yeah, but I have to, like, uh, like put like put a damper on the alarm level. Yeah. Yes. Some people might be too concerned. It's like, they're benign, but they're still annoying Well, and very yeah. visible. Well, and here's the thing: people think that you're pregnant, and people think I'm very pregnant. So when we go out, like when we went out for drinks, so when you go out, so when a pregnant-looking woman walks into a bar, <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> there's a heat of um, just a combination of surprise. Sometimes it's judgment. Sometimes it's like, what is she doing in here? You know. So I kind of feel for pregnant women because people kind of think you're not human and shouldn't be doing human things, like meeting friends at bars, whether or not you're going to be drinking. So. We were at a bar, <laughs> met up to uh, say hello to each other uh, as we breezed through each other's towns, and um, the bartender asked me if I wanted a drink, and I kind of was going to refuse because I just didn't want all of the hot judgment coming my direction. And um, Alexander was like, you want a drink? Have a drink. Have a drink. And that, that's always me. <laughs> he could be at a funeral. And he could be at a bris. <laughs> There's always room for wine. <laughs> and and so then my immediate, like, I patted my belly. I was like, yeah, baby's craving it. And he's like, that's the best thing I've ever heard. The baby baby's craving, craving it. it. Baby craving it. But, you know, that's that's just about life. You know, you have to, you know, just you smile and, with it. and work yeah, through it. Yeah, you have to roll with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, ups and downs. And mm. we're all going to talk about ups and downs of, of, of everything. Um, real fast, we have to talk about nonsense. Um, just to warm things up, Nordstrom's is selling, and it's it's a rock. Fly- Thank you. <laughs> a rock in a leather pouch. Eighty five dollars, and it's one. It's a huge seller. Yeah, a rock in a le- a rock. <laughs> it's like an L.A. Yep. You go out on this in a field somewhere and pick up a, a rock. Nothing special about the rock. And then they've made a leather pouch for it engraved or something. And it's eighty five dollars at Nordstrom's. Do you want to hear their ridiculous oh. description? What? Oh, <laughs> But people are buying it. They're that's, buying that's, that's, it. No, well, it's sick. after this election, we see how people can be. But well, remember, still. they used to say people. Karen is disgusted. Rock. Remember that? That's what they're pet saying. Rock. This is the ex- a pet rock was like five bucks. This is and yeah. here's this the is now you have a leather satchel. 80, this is ridiculous. A paperweight, a conversation piece, a work of art. It's up to you. Oh. But the smooth Los Angeles area stone, Los Angeles Los area. Angeles stone. Oh, that oh makes gosh. it better, right? That makes it better. Yeah. yeah. Wrapped in rich vegetable tanned American leather. 
What, is, what does that even mean? Vegetable tanned? I don't, I don't know. It's I don't know. not I, vegan. This is for the person like, I mean, who has everything, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. And wants nothing. Would you like yeah. that? Yeah. Put a rock <laughs> under your tree <laughs> yeah. this morning. With it's a leather my, yeah. strap. Why don't we just do yeah. coal? Merry Christmas. Right? Yeah, oh, no, no, because it's sure to draw attention wherever it rests. Oh, my Well, God. we are sitting here talking about it. Yeah. I mean, you know. Okay, but this is just ridiculous. It was on a talk show today. It's so ridiculous. And everybody said, what the? Oh. Why? <laughs> and who would spend eighty-five dollars for a rock and a pouch? Oof. I mean, I've been between a rock and a hard place, but yeah, n- no, 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 Oof. no, no. It's Don't not come. working tonight. It's just, my comedy machine is just it's 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 an awe. That's because you have the king. Uh, that's, why, that's what it is. Like yeah. I've never been so tongue-tied in my life. I don't believe that. Even after like ten martinis, I still speak better than this. <laughs> um, <laughs> as always, also in in the chat room, we have my Mama mom, Rose. Mama Rose, Mama, Mama Rose. Rose, Mama. Can you hear me? With a so brilliant Snoopy you backdrop. Return the rock is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got. That's what I got. Thanks so much. Yes, mom. Anyway, my mom diligently every week is in the chat room. She's done research. She's also been a fan of Mr. Littles for so long. Um, so she's done her research. If you have questions, she's going to answer your questions. If it's a burning, fabulous question, she's going to come on the air um, and ask us that question. But thank you for uh, manning the chat room, mom. Well, and I have to say that I usually have some things I'm going to say or whatever, but I'm just so overwhelmed by the fact that you have Rich Little there. I mean, I grew up with him. I remember from, I mean, everything, so many shows, so many times. He just blew me away with his impressions, and I'm so jealous I'm not there, but I love him, and he's just... Like I say, he's been a part of my life. Well, you used to babysit him, yes. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Now I'm returning all the gifts. All yeah. the rocks. All the rocks. All are the going. rocks. Mom, going back. what is your favorite impression that Mr. Little does? I, I liked uh, Jimmy Stewart, but he was really good with Richard Nixon. Yeah. Yes. No. There you go. Yes. Nixon. Yeah, that's the one people remember me for, yeah. Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon? Yeah. Guy, uh, the other day I was driving down the street and... Uh, and a guy was doing his Nixon sign yeah. for me, oh, right? Yeah, sure. And he was leaning over, and he wasn't paying attention where he was going. Oh, dear. And he was doing his Nixon for me. He went right into the back of a garbage truck. <laughs> oh, my God. Right? <laughs> now, a policeman pulled up, right? And he got out of the car. And as I looked in my rearview mirror, I could see him with the oh, cop dear. going, Oh, God. <laughs> How did I, I am not a crook. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, I'm, I mean, it was funny. Yeah. I don't know. How do you not report that him. to your insurance company? Uh, cause of accident. Uh, Rich Little. Rich yeah. Little. How many accidents Richard have Nixon. you? Oh, yes. Wow. Well, Rich. I, I was not even there. I was out of town at the time. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, so I am not responsible for this accident. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Nixon was an interesting man. I met him, you know, years ago at San Clemente. I was born and raised in San Clemente. Yeah? I, yes. Well, uh, I went down to a garden party. This was in the 70s. And um, all my act was there. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> they were all Republican back then, all of Hollywood. Not today, but no, back then today. they were. Except for and Susan Sarandon. my act but. was there. And I never, been, never met my act before. But <laughs> not letting anyway, um, I met Nixon. And uh, we were outside by the swimming Jeez. pool. And Debbie Reynolds grabbed my arm and pulled me around the pool and threw me at the back of Nixon and said, Mr. President, Rich is going to do you. <laughs> and he you can't turned say around that anymore. Like, like maybe I'm going to shoot him, right? <laughs> and he turned around with a scowl and he looked at me and then everybody gathered around, oh, right? And I had to do my Nixon in front of him. Of course. Yes, and yes. I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to say? I can't use that line. Oh my God. you know. <laughs> and I started, I started to do my Richard Nixon in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> and as I'm doing him, I could see that he wasn't registering at oh, all. Oh, Lord. I mean, he turned to Pat, his wife, and said, why is this young man speaking in this strange voice? <laughs> <laughs> and um, he, he didn't get it. He didn't know I was doing him, and it bombed. I mean, I was oh, so God. embarrassed. Like the Richard. sweat was like beating. And oh, my like, God. Like you right John now, John Wayne yeah. was there. He yelled out, somebody get a rope. <laughs> <laughs> and George Burns said, you know, I was so embarrassed, I ate a flower. <laughs> Real life magic in you guys, front of your heart, eyes. Like yeah. You could feel, yeah. well, and, if I had and, a heart. And Glenn Ford easy. said, Rich, I hope your, your car is parked north so you can get back to Canada. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that was for you, Mom. Yeah. But I'll tell you, She's I did so a good happy. Nixon yeah. that day. You know why? When I left that party, his wife, Pat, went with me. 
uh, I couldn't get rid of her. I, I think I think people <laughs> recognize you for that because you you know you mostly resemble him. The voices you do are such a wide spectrum, but like appearance with with the with the dark eyes and, and yeah yeah you have to look yeah. through the tops of your eyes yes. when doing Nixon. Yes, know? I mean it's 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 eerie. And we have no sense of humor at all. Yet. No, well, no. hello. Did you no. see how we dressed? Well, <laughs> what do you expect from a guy who wore the same blue suit for over Every thirty years exactly. and never took the hanger out of it? <laughs> 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 I mean, he, he was the hunchback of the White House. It was like, <laughs> yeah, he was a strange guy. I, I did not get to know him very well. That was it. I don't think I anybody got to know him very well. Yeah. No. no, no. Um, and this, I mean, we're going to get so in depth into your approach and and the many voices. We're going to see some uh, some rarely seen footage that we have. But I just have to say right off the bat, you know, people uh, come and go that do Im- impressions, but it's always like a surface. It's like, you know, like an impression, like uh, like a copy of a painting. It's just surface. It doesn't capture the texture and the timber. Your voice, like the resonation. I'm a singer, so I, you know, I can pick up on how a voice resonates. You even have it down to the way the body resonates, the nasal placement, the timber, the, the the cracks in the voice. You have it down to to such a science. It's not just this broad um, idea. It's literally uh, the person in the in the room with you. That's uncanny. And you well, never you see, studied voice either. You just no, I never studied voice. Right. I never took singing lessons or anything. But right. when I was a kid, I loved the movies and I loved actors. And I would go to a movie and I would uh, just get carried away by the whole, you know, the movie and and the star. And I would go home and act the movie out for my folks. Wow. And they used to say to me, we never go to the movies. Our son does it for us. <laughs> <laughs> I would play all the parts when wow. I'd go home. Wow. Love yeah. that. Well, I and you were that. a bit of a troublemaker in, in school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I imitated the teacher. When the teacher would ask me a question, I would answer the I love teacher in their voice. Oh, I love that. Usually the wrong answer, too. And um, <laughs> uh, finally, the teacher got wise to this, put me at the back of the room, and I just read comic books, and nobody bothered me ever again. <laughs> This is this is just um, so Phenomenal. amazing. Our sponsors are so uh, excited. Yes, for they make our show. show. Um, Panache Optical Gallery is a luxurious showroom in Palm Springs where they do all different kinds of customized glasses. Yeah, Karen, have have you ever been to Panache? They do all mm-hmm. of the Hollywood stars. No, I don't. Never heard of it. Yeah, is it just great. in Palm Springs? Yeah, it's I think so. I think yeah, their yeah, main yeah. showroom is just in Palm Springs. They have like a private. And Rich, next time you're there, walk in, tell them that you came from on the rocks. You'll walk out with something. They're listening fabulous. right now, so they okay. we love them. They do uh, high end, super high end, but they yeah. they do all the vintage frames, but they do new, but they do all of the stars. Oh, wow. And they have a private showroom. It's literally like a Beverly Hills spot for sunglasses or regular? for sungla- sunglasses. For, well, they, they do, do both, both, but they for we were in uh, Palm Springs for Pride, and they gave us glasses to wear for nice. the weekend. Custom so made. I got the Ava Pro like rounded oh, yeah. yes. Lovely. yes yes he did <laughs> yes um also in Palm Springs I wear them to bed <laughs> the Andalusian court which Alexander you have some history with that hotel you could tell us a little bit about that You're talking about classic Hollywood it's right. a beautiful resort right off Arenas Road it's a little jewel they don't really do a lot of advertising the resort is so amazing. You get your own, it's like an apartment. But my grandma used to uh, be the owner of the hotel, and she inherited oh. it from her mother in law, Mabel Wagner, who was original roommates uh, with Lucille Ball. Oh my so, gosh. who has stayed at this property? Uh, Lucille Ball, uh, Desi Arnaz, Gerald Ford, Nancy Sinatra has stayed there just because it was, so, it was the little getaway. Uh, Bing Crosby. Is that in uh, Palm Springs too? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's right off Arenas Road. So look them up. Uh, the new owners have such a respect for the for the uh, for the history of it. They have a beautiful picture of Lucille Ball. Yeah. Um, I just mailed them some of our black and whites with oh, Bing Crosby perfect. and all that, so they can hang in their lobby. So that's that's one of our sponsors too. Um, and then we also, in Palm, our last Palm Springs, we have to thank MyCityEveryday.com, uh, which is where you can basically find out everything happening going on in Palm Springs, whether or not it's at a nightclub or a restaurant or um, you know a movie or a live show. Go to their website. We have to thank uh, Hillcrest Social, which is our San Diego events LGBT platform where it's similar to My City Every Day. They'll tell you everything going on there. And they there. stream all of our episodes. We love Hillcrest. We love them. Uh, Test Loop, which I'm surprised. I don't know if you know about Test Loop yet 
it, but it's the new premier luxury car system that takes you from city to city. Oh my God, Rich. It goes from um, Los Angeles to Vegas and then LA to Palm Springs back and forth. You sit in your own. Uh, it's like, a, no, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a, um, so it's almost like your own capsule, if it, like a first class airplane seat mm. in a car, in almost a car. in a, in a Tesla. It's a Tesla. Oh, wow. Oh. And it's called Test Loop. Test Loop yes. with Teslas. You know, the doors go up, and 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 you have an operator call you on the iPhone. They ask you if there's anything they can do for you. Uh, our driver the whole time was on autopilot and was playing the ukulele while oh we were dear. while we that, were while signed we were. by Elon Musk. But right, by right, right, <laughs> Elon. But but it's such a luxury experience. But it's affordable. You can put on uh, canceling earphones. You literally are like it's like being in on a first class airplane. Yeah, that drives you to and from. And it's, it's, I think it's, it's thirty nine. It's some somewhere around thirty nine to fifty nine dollars it's pretty affordable that's it that's you mean it. to go to like vegas to go uh, to no i think no, vegas might vegas be a, a, a be little more. Bit, yeah. bit more yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not sure but um oh. then we have to we just have to also thank our proud media sponsor with bears cubs and scruff which is a cute little campy instagram page um showing off different male models and we have to thank um the <laughs> premier the premier lube spunk lube which is an award-winning <laughs> lube um, no, and I think <laughs> everybody goes home with a bottle, just so everybody knows. And I think that's <laughs> it. That's 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 the what we have that's to say. Enough. That's enough. That's enough. We, that's enough. we have Care some. That's enough. <laughs> we have some upcoming events. Uh, this Thursday, we'll be at the Sandbox on Melrose uh, with Glitterbox, which is a party thrown by Jennifer Salinas uh, on, on a monthly basis. We love you, Jennifer. We'll see you there once a month. It's at eight thirty. There's no cover. Uh, drinks, networking, entertainment. People. Uh, they've asked us to live stream from there, so which we, we will. will. Uh, and then Alexander, you'll be at Paradise bar on Saturday in Long Beach, correct? Yes, in Long Beach. Uh, they're celebrating the release of a web series uh, on the Queen Mary. It's all it's a great YouTube series. So I'm hosting the finale. There's going to be some celebrities. Uh, it's at a piano bar, so I Fabulous. might sing a show tune or two. Fabulous. Um, and it's sponsored by this new app called Hooch. Uh-huh. So, you know... Uh, Hooch is the app where if you buy one drink somewhere, then they'll give you another drink somewhere else. Every day, for 365 days, you could go to a different place oh, and get a... Uh, so you could have 365 yes. drinks. Yes. Me and Betty Davis. Okay. Yes. And then Sunday will be at at the series, can we say this? The premiere of a new series, uh, Sex and Execs. It's by Stan Zimmerman, um, who wrote Golden Girls, Roseanne, Gilmore, Gilmore Girls, Girls. Um, and we'll be emceeing that as well. And that's at Flaming Saddles on Sunday. Then on December nineteenth, we are having our On the Rocks Christmas party at Flaming Saddles. We are taking over their karaoke night. I'm so afraid. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> We're gonna have guests from the past, from the future. Everybody's gonna just sing holiday stuff. And there's going to be drink specials. We're going to pick whatever they want to sing, yeah. And it's from what time to what time? We're going to do it from 9 p.m. to midnight. 9 to midnight. Woof! Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Nothing good happens in West Hollywood after midnight. So <laughs> that I mean, is true. You know, yeah. And then last but not least, I'll be simulcast, uh, simulcast broadcasting with my city every day on New Year's Eve in Palm Springs. We're going to report from a different venue at the top of every hour. We're ending the night uh, at the BB Masquerade Party at Hard Rock Cafe or Hard Rock Hotel. Hard Rock Hotel. Whew, that's a lot of stuff. That we're was a lot, busy. but we're done. Got okay. it all out there. We're done. <laughs> Charlene, we're going to kick off the show. We would love for you. One of my favorite songs you've done that you have changed into so many different things. Um, it's one of my favorite songs. It's called Come On. Or, yes, it is. And it's when did this song first come to you? When did you first do this song? Oh, goodness. This would have been, I can't remember the year, um, but like 2009, 2010. I actually performed it at Palm Springs Pride oh. that year. We that. performed at Pride this year. Yeah, well, this was a few years We almost ago. fell off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> he, by the I way. I did he. not. I even <laughs> had backup dancers. It was very um, electronic sounding. Um, yeah. So then how many times has the song sort of changed since the original up until now? Well, the original was, um, well, it's still like the song. So you like songs that are broken up into different pieces. So like the melody is the same. My voice is the same. But now instead of playing it over like electronic beats, I'm playing it over acoustic guitar. Oh, I love that. And the chorus, like I've listened to the song so many times because you have to memorize it. Can, can, <laughs> we, can we just say the chorus? Yes, we can. Okay, ready? Come, come on if you want to, I know you're going to want to show me how you're going to want to come out if you're going to want to come out. Oh, well, there you have it. Wow. I had to listen wow. to it so many times. There you so, have it. Like, wow. slowly Let's see Jimmy Stewart say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> write it out. Write oh it out. Goodness. The show's only an hour and a half. <laughs> write it okay. out. I will, <laughs> write it out. I will write it out for you if you do that. Oh my goodness! That you would make me you and imagine? my father. My father's in town, which is why I'm actually here. Is my dad came into town, and I was like, "Oh well, I'll come too." <laughs> that's a funny. He would that's love a funny that. Bit. That's a we funny. could have you, you sing it at karaoke. Jimmy once said to me, "You know, Rich, I I talk so slow 
<laughs> One time, I, I was halfway through making a movie, and I, I found out they'd already finished the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> and he was such a good guy, right? He was such. Oh, he was, he was so a wonderful man with a great sense of humor. Yes, you yeah. taught him how to do him. Yeah, I remember <laughs> one time I went over to visit him. He lived in Beverly Hills, Roxbury Avenue, Roxbury. and I used to go over occasionally. And then you know, and um, I remember one time uh, he was walking me to my car, and a tour bus pulled around the corner full of people. And the and the uh, the driver said, "Oh my gosh, there's Jimmy Stewart right there, da- and there's Rich Little with Jimmy Stewart. I can't believe it." And he said, "Jimmy, what's Rich Little doing at your house?" And Jimmy said, uh, "He comes over uh, once a month to get his batteries recharged." <laughs> Isn't that great? He was quick. It's wow. great. And there's a great piece on YouTube. Wow. Just look up Rich Little and Jimmy Stewart at the Dean Martin Dean roast. Martin really. and yeah. you, you teach him how to do him, and the yes. audience gets Sterical. involved. It's, and that, it's was, so that was a, I got lucky with that because we never rehearsed that. We had no idea where we were. I knew uh, pretty much what I was going to do, but I, I was hoping Jimmy would pick up on it. In other words, I'd show him how to do himself, and he'd do it badly, and then I'd say, <laughs> that's the worst Jimmy Stewart I've ever heard. Yeah. And it worked out that way because he was bright, and he yes, he, he figured it out. Yes. He was a wonderful man. Yeah, oh, was. my God. Not only a great actor, but just, just a great human being. And all these stories are in Little by Little, People I've Known and Been. Oh, you said uh, it. Uh, drink. Oh, little, yeah, by little. Little. Drink. Okay. little by Little. Little by Little, sweetie. There's nothing little about this book. Um, what I love about this book, too, is that it's filled with so many amazing pictures. A lot of pictures. Well, that's the first thing people do when they pick up a oh, book yes. in, the, you know, in, in the bookstore is they look at all the pictures. You have always been a handsome gentleman, if I, if I might well, say. Well, I don't know about that, but, um, <laughs> you know. And that hair. like Now at my age, it's, my all, it's all lighting now. <laughs> I'm not too... Thrilled about this it. setup here. Yeah, <laughs> it's radio, okay. sweetie. All that's right. okay. That's okay. Um, Charlene, you are gonna you're gonna have us. Uh, so it's just slowly say what the refrain is. Come on, if you wanna, and I know you're gonna wanna. Show me how you're gonna wanna come on if you wanna come on. Yes. Ooh. So that's what it is, Charlene. You are you are gonna serenade us, and when we come back. Um, we're talking. We're we're talking Hollywood. Legends. Little by little. Little by little. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. am I going right now? You are yes. Girl. Wow. Baby craving it. I'm craving it. We're all craving it. Baby craving it. Here's come on, everybody. So you say you wanna take me there, through the city lights onto the scene where we can dance with out of care. Come in closer and show me what you mean. I might say yes or change my mind. I'm curious to know your kind. I think you're fly. You think I'm hot. Tonight's the night. You get your shot. You get your shot. I'm giving you a shot. I'm giving you a shot Hey, come on if you wanna And I know you're gonna wanna show me How you're gonna wanna come on If you're gonna wanna come on <laughs> Come on Come on if you wanna And I know you're gonna wanna show me How you're gonna wanna come on If you're gonna wanna come on Come on if you wanna And I know you're gonna wanna show me How you're gonna wanna come on If you're gonna wanna come on wow. Come on if you wanna, and I know you're gonna wanna show me how you're gonna wanna come on. If you're gonna wanna come on, feel the beat, hear the sound, let the rhythm move you around me in this dance. Take a chance, it might lead to a little romance here on the floor. Give me more of this dance disease, music's the cure. As we sweat in this vet, all the glow and dripping wet. Please turn me loose and watch me shine, then come in close. Take your time, step by step, turn by turn. If you wanna teach and I wanna learn how to ride this groove as we move. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two. Hip to hip, side to side, let's make this dance a magic ride. Eye to eye, toe to toe, come on and show me what you know. Enchanted by the rhythm spell we come together and fit so well eyes like and stare a mood appears music's the magic in the air music's the magic in the air come on if you wanna and i know you're gonna wanna show me how you're gonna wanna come on if you're gonna wanna come on 
coming if you wanna And I know you're gonna wanna show me How you're gonna wanna come And if you're gonna wanna come on Y'all can sing with me if you want yeah. Come on if you wanna And I know you're gonna wanna show me How you gonna wanna come on If you're gonna wanna come on Come on Come on if you wanna And I know you're gonna wanna show me How you gonna wanna come on If you wanna come on Totally on rehearsal Come on are you ready to get out of here? The night is young and I feel the need to slide. Toss the caution, take my double dare. Rev your engine and take me for a ride. I might say yes or change my mind. I'm curious to know your kind. I think you're fly, you think I'm hot. Tonight's the night you get your shot. You get your shot. I'm giving you a shot. You gonna take it or what? <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Come, come on if you wanna, and I know you're gonna wanna show me how you gonna wanna come on. You gonna wanna come on? Not that bad, Alexander. Come on if you wanna, and I know you're gonna wanna show me how you gonna wanna come on. If you're gonna wanna come on. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Come on if you wanna, and I know you're gonna wanna show me how you gonna wanna come on. If you're gonna wanna come on, come on. Come on if you wanna, and I know you're gonna wanna show me how you gonna wanna come on. If you're gonna wanna come on, come on. Yeah, Whoa, nice, amazing. Oh, wow. How did you learn that? Yeah. And I will tell you, this is uh, she taught herself guitar from YouTube. How did YouTube. you learn that? YouTube. Yeah, that. Oh, would I've listened to her version, but it, but a, a dance version of it. Yeah. Yes. Plus, That's still a dance version. That's more like a you know, boot wow. scooting version. That was fabulous. That oh, was. That fabulous. I love Charlene. So real fast, Charlene. Um, Karen Cadle is doing her version of what we've been doing on the show for this year. It's called Rapid Fire, where we just give you questions. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh. Karen Cadle has a classier version of what we're about to do. Okay. Are you ready? I, uh, yes. We're gonna do now you now or never. Oh my goodness! All right, Charlene. Song you wish you would have made famous. Uh, 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 the greatest love of all. First thing that popped in my head. All right, go ahead. Um, would you give a homeless person CPR if they were dying? What Ooh, kind Lord. of question yeah, is I that? Would. Oh my god! Yeah. I would. That I mean, it, if I knew, quickly. if I noticed and knew it, and like, yeah, for sure. Uh, what is your vocal warm up before a big show? Yawns. You don't sing like at your highest and your lowest and, and do all that? I mean, I go through the scales, but like mostly just like make sure the muscles are just stretched out. But yeah, not too much sound. I'm usually quiet before a show. Hmm. Um, where did you go on your first airplane ride? Oh, God. Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> your, ce your celebrity crush? I don't know if he's a celebrity to everybody. People kind of sort of know who he is, but I have a hard crush on this singer-songwriter. Amos Lee. I said it. Well, he knows yeah. now, sweetie. All right. I know. So, well, not sorry. Radio. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your favorite junk food? Potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> you go, girl. Beyonce or Mariah? Mariah. Uh, tell me something that you would happily do again. I would happily move to Northern California again. No. <laughs> <laughs> what is the cheesiest song that every time you hear it, you like roll your eyes? It could be a well-known song, just... What is that baby, baby song? Baby, baby. No, not, not what. <laughs> I don't know that one, but what, it was like a Justin Bieber song. Uh, easy, easy any target. Justin Bieber song, really. All right, sweetie. <laughs> Charlene Modest, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry that was not more exciting. It's okay. <laughs> we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're talking uh, to Karen Cadle and Rich Little. We're talking everything Hollywood legend about your, your favorite actors and i i'm cannot wait little all right, by little all right ah the holidays a time for giving a time for getting and a time for going and going and going and going and going, and going. when you need a break we're here helping you make sense of all the good and the going of the holidays happy holidays from all of us at ubnradio.com Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel alive. I've been locked out of hell. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with a 
most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. We are back uh, with a man of a thousand voices. Um, right off the bat, you know, we have so much to talk about. Um, reading your book, I, there were so many facts that, that I did not know. Um, such as you are Canadian, and you are just recently-ish 2010. American. Welcome to America. Are you happy now you're an American? <laughs> I'm a uh, dual citizenship. Yes. So, uh, well, welcome. I was sworn in as John Wayne. The judge wanted to <laughs> yes. swear me in How crazy as John is Wayne. I'm, this is true. And I, I did it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, <laughs> Pilgrim. <laughs> and John Wayne also loved you, too. He, he loved, you know, sparring with you. Well, I once showed John Wayne how to do his walk. <laughs> this is true. He was filming something at, on Laugh-In, and I went over to watch them, and uh, he saw me there, and he said, Little, don't you leave this studio without <laughs> showing me how I do my walk. I'm losing it. <laughs> so I did. Everybody got back, and I went right across the whole set doing John Wayne's walk. And you know what he said when I finished? So that's how I walk. Huh? <laughs> Hell, I've been walking like Loretta Young for 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of us still do. Oh. Hey. <laughs> but, but isn't it funny? With voices, we never know how we sound. Like, I'll hear recordings of mine. I'm like, oh, God, I sound like Nathan Lane and uh, Richard Simmons all together. <laughs> we just call that a Tuesday, though, baby. You know what I mean? Really? That's just, you that's... sound like a rape whistle on Friday. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no, but, but we, uh, so when you do somebody's voice to them, they might not, you know, uh, like that's be true. taken aback. Well, like, Nixon. Oh, I sound no, that that's way. true. You usually get a better reaction from the wife or the children because they know what they sound like. But I've had many people say, that doesn't sound like me, does it? And then everybody's behind going, yes, yes. it does. Yeah. Yes, yes, it does. Rich, was it when you would answer the teachers back? Was, was that when you sort of learned that you had this amazing gift yeah, of doing? Yeah, because the, the other kids, they just loved it, yeah. you know. And especially when I gave the wrong answer to the <laughs> teacher, yes. right? They loved that. And I knew at, at that time that I had something going there, you know. Now, you played so many scenes and sang so many songs as, as other characters. Yeah. Did you ever just want to be an actor on your own? Did you ever audition for just well, roles yeah, as I Rich Little? Well, yeah, I did actually in my career. Uh, I've done, I did a, a police woman once where I played a, a murder rapist. Oh, uh, wow. so something light. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Funny. And I remember phoning up my mother Funny. when it aired and she said, I didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I could imitate my mother. Did you ever call into school as as your mom and be like, oh... I, Richard will not be coming <laughs> in this morning. He has a terrible cold. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be lethal for you to... Oh, yeah, I mean, thank you, God. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I can't Mama Rose, voice. thank God that yeah, Alexander yes. cannot do any sort of impersonation I never of did you. my father, though. I, I would have loved to have done my father, but I couldn't get his voice down. But it, I did my mother a lot, and uh, <laughs> she used to just shake her head and say... You missed it. <laughs> do you do you have an absolute favorite from over the years of everyone that you've done? Do you have one favorite, or is that too much to, to say? Well, well, <laughs> well. I I forget his name. <laughs> but, uh, oh no! He was he was president, Ronald Reagan. And you know, one time um, he said, "You know, Rich, I think you do me better than I do." <laughs> So when I pass away, I think they should bury you. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was very quick, Reagan. Well, he was an actor at the beginning Sounds too. Witty, yeah, very quick I remember yeah. we we used to talk a lot about movies. When I would perform at the White House, which I did many times when he was president, we'd end up in a corner uh, talking about movies. He was quite a movie buff, and I remember uh, saying to him, "You know, one of my favorite movies was Casablanca." Well, it was mine, too. <laughs> and um, I said, I read somewhere, and maybe you could clear this up. I read somewhere that you were considered to be, uh, to play one of the leads in Casablanca. Is that true? And he said, no, that's not true. They gave the part to Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> that is pretty funny. Yeah. I do have to say, uh, and this is just my own personal opinion, I think Ronald Reagan was the last president that really exuded the class of a president, whether you agreed with his politics or not. He was the last classy president. We agreed person. to not talk politics. I know, but... With our guests. You know, I would just love to know what, what some of the past presidents might think of, of our of our current administration or future administration. I well, don't know. we've got a bunch of them in the room. Yeah. So. <laughs> <You know. laughs> I would like to see that show. I want to see Jim, that. Jim, Jimmy Carter would probably, <laughs> Jim, Jimmy would probably think that it was not <laughs> peanut. <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy Carter has ended up being our sweetheart, by the way. Yeah. How, how funny. Nice. Is you know, a lot of people mistake me for Orville Redenbacher. <laughs> <laughs> but he was popcorn, and I, <laughs> and I was not. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, you have yes. you have heard uh, the voices uh, that that Rich yes. uh, embodies live and, and in person. Your mm-hmm. your Rolodex is, is just huge. Yeah. How, what was the first time you met Rich? Oh, God. And, and what was your first good question impression when you saw him alive? Because you know, seeing your footage is, is uncanny. But in today's age, with sound editing and all that, hearing it in person really gives you the chills. Well, I, I don't remember the first. I don't. I don't remember. It was probably was on a signing? television. No, it was no, probably on a TV that? show. It was yeah, probably, probably on, on Hour show. magazine yeah. in the yeah. 80s. Yeah. But I saw him again in Vegas last week, and uh, it's a fantastic, kind of a new show. It, it kind of what the book it's is. It's a mini history of my career. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's just refreshingly fantastic, and great clips. Great. I love the Ronald Reagan, why, he, why you look down before you say something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I said that to him when I first started imitating him. I said, we all know you say, well, well, <laughs> but I noticed that you always looked down and then you brought your head up and said, well, why did you look down? This is exactly what he said. <laughs> Very simple. You'd look down too if, if you owned a horse ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? We know in the White House there's a lot of... He was quick. (laughs) Yeah. He was quick. He uh, he was like Bob Hope. I mean, he just... He liked humor. And when you you asked him something, he always went for a joke. You know, he said, I I passed up, uh, you know, Casablanca for bedtime for Bonzo. (laughs) (laughs) And I said, was that one of your favorite movies? He said, yes, because, you know, I spend a lot of time in the Senate, so I was used to working with, uh, you know, with... uh, Apes. (laughs) Apes. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe the first time I saw him live was at one of the Judy Garland shows, which I went to all the rehearsals. Ah, and he wouldn't have known. I didn't know him, of wow. course. And I was, you must a, have been I was a child, six years old. Well. Yeah, close. No, have you ever heard her Judy Garland story? Uh, so I just just to no, preface this, I'm I'm no. such a huge like like a big surprise. You told, he, Alexander told me the story right before this, and I was Killer. I was I'm I was a huge shocked. Judy Garland yeah. fan. Can, I'd love can, to hear it. Yeah, yeah it's good. Can, can you uh, briefly, yeah. briefly, I loved her, and uh, when I really love somebody and I'm determined to see them, I get there. I mean, I've flown many distances uh, in order to see somebody. So I was invited to see one of her first shows by a friend. And while there, I saw a script lying on the edge of the stage. I borrowed it, stole it, (laughs) and uh, went back the next Thursday when I knew she would be rehearsing, went to the stage entrance and said, I need to return this script to stage 33. And they said, do you know where you're going? I said, yeah, sure, (laughs) which I didn't. And so I went to her stage and of course it was closed really really closed and uh, this tall red-headed freckle-faced guard said what do you want and I said I want to return the script uh, and I would love to see the rehearsal and he said uh-huh he said in order to do that you have to get permission written permission from Miss Garland and I stood at my full height and said well where is she like an idiot mm-hmm. no. and uh, he said follow the yellow brick road and I went huh uh, he said, follow the yellow brick road. It's there. And they had painted a yellow brick road all yeah, the way to down dressing to her dressing trailer on the second floor of mm-hmm. CBS. So I, I skipped down the yellow brick road like, a, like I knew what I was doing. Knocked like Ray on, Bolger. Knocked, yeah, like Ray Bolger. <laughs> knocked on the like door with my heart in my throat and tear level and for fear that she might actually answer. And knocked on the door and Mel Torme answered yes. because he was a musical director. And, uh, and Mel said, what, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> what, who are you and what are you, what are you doing here? 
<laughs> and I said, I, I want to watch rehearsal, but I can't unless Miss Garland signs this piece of, I had this red scrap of paper. And he said, Judy. I went, oh, God. Uh, what the hell am I thinking? So she came to the door in, in a red nightshirt, as I recall, and with a, she drank leaf from milk wine. She had the wine in her hand and no makeup and those huge brown eyes looked down and I said I want to watch the rehearsal more than anything but I can unless you sign this piece of paper and she looked at me and she said give it to me and I at that point I wanted to die <laughs> and she opened the door and she signed it and closed the door and I went Oh God. God! And I skipped back. I skipped back down the yellow brick <laughs> the road. Yellow brick I didn't fly back. Yeah. What yeah. did it say? Kick this woman <laughs> out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you may not watch it. Went up to the feckle face guard and mm -hmm. just put it out and showed showed him. Wow. I said, "Here, I have her her signature." And he went, "Really?" I said, "Yeah." She signed this paper, and he said, "Okay." Wow. So in I went, and went every single week. Uh, Did you keep that piece of paper? No. Oh. Oh, cool. I thought about that the other day. I said, why didn't I keep that? And I, I hope this is in your book. What you got to see in terms of the dress rehearsal, oh. some of the, the missed rehearsals, and some of the yeah. cut music. Yeah. And I just love that it's, it's it's such a perfect point for us to start, in, uh, Mr. Little, talking about your career. Because you started with Judy Garland. With Mel Torme. started you. Yeah. And Mel Torme used to watch movies with Mel Torme, yes. which, which is unbelievable to me. But really, Judy Garland kind of... Uh, once you're on that show, like the, the rest they say is history, and I actually have some footage from your appearance on oh, Judy Garland. Oh my gosh! If I you could kind of narrate old. us yeah. through it, yeah, if, if bring you want to put the headphones yeah. on, so, so, oh. so, so you I'd can, rather not, but oh, I know. <laughs> so you can see. Yeah. Next time we'll get you a better pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This, I mean, this, this just floors me. Tonight we'd love to see John Wayne. Mm. That's right, John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> call me Dope for short. <laughs> Better than him. We'd like to hear Jack Penny. G and O. <laughs> it's surely, it surely is a real thrill to be on the show. It's crazy to me. Yeah, that's that's so spot on. Where is Orson Welles? This is your obedience. Oh my wow. God. Orson Welles. Sang. Fantastic. Yeah. Good evening. Yeah. Tonight, let's oh, I love this one. This is Bing Crosby, and it's real nice, you know, to be here and join Judy on our little Sunday night soiree. Scary. We wish they were on our show tonight. Great, what a great opening. Yeah. Judy Carlin show. There she is. Wow. There's my girl. Believe it or not, believe it or not, the voices you just heard were done by one man, and he does more impersonations than anyone I know. He has hundreds of things that he does. He's a young fellow from Canada. Young fellow By the name Canada. of Rich Little, and I want to go Wow. And she wasn't the biggest fan of impressioners. No. no. She didn't like impersonators. I, I can't get over all the voices you do. You're really amazing. Thank you, Judy. I mean, so many people do impressions of Jimmy Cagney or, or Humphrey Bogart, but... But you're the only man I've ever heard who does an impersonation of Lloyd Bridges. Uh, Would you do Lloyd Bridges right uh, now? Yeah. Lloyd huh? Bridges. Oh. <laughs> I love uh, your Lloyd Bridges. Lloyd Bridges yeah? uh, skin diving can be fun. <laughs> uh, but it's also dangerous. So uh, uh, wear a swimsuit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see you next week, huh? That's <laughs> huh? amazing. So from what I heard, she wasn't the biggest fan of impressions, but because you did um, her co-star in A Star is Born. Um, James Mason. James Mason, mm -hmm. which you, can, can I hear a little bit? James Mason. Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen to me, Esther. A career is a curious thing. Talent isn't always enough. You need a sense of timing, an eye for seeing the turning point or recognizing the big chance when it comes along and grabbing it. Unbelievable. Uh, uh, we and, are, we are never speechless, by the yeah. way. <laughs> Ever speechless, and we are speechless. And that's what got you booked. Do you yeah, remember? That, that was the impression that did it. She said, book him when she heard that. And I went up to James Mason a couple of years later. I met him at an AFI tribute to um, John Houston, and I walked right up to James Mason. I said, Mr. Mason, I, I'm Rich Little. I do an impression of you. And he said, what on earth for? <laughs> And walked away. And I said, no, you got me on the Judy Garland show. You're my impression of you. Wow. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. Move away from this idiot. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember your feelings before walking onto the stage with Judy Garland? Mm. Um, were you nervous? You seemed so 
not natural nervous, uh, easy non-plus. yeah well that's what you've got to do and if you don't yeah. settle yourself down you know <laughs> you've got to keep telling yourself just relax do it you know what you know i when i did the dean martin roast i had to do this all the time just say to myself calm down just do it the way you do it you know if there were two people and hosting the Tonight Show, I mean that was big pressure too. Filling Oof. in for Johnny Carson, yeah. Oh my gosh, you know. But you, you, you know, you just had to settle yourself down. Otherwise, you'd make a complete idiot yourself, you know. Um, we actually have a, a question from from the chat room. Go, go ahead. Hi, Mama Rose. Hey, Mama Rose. Hello. Um, what impression was your most challenging to do? Hmm. Thank you. Question from the chat room. What's the most challenging? Yes. Donald Trump. Oh, God. Mm. He's challenging for a few yeah. different reasons. I, I don't do them, but Melania does. So I have to ask you. <laughs> I really stunned him with that one. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what I know. I, I, sw- I switched pages on that one. I was yeah. like, oh, God. <laughs> one for Mr. Lennon. Yeah. Oh, so, God. <laughs> you know, Paul Lynn hated my impression, you know. Well, He's the one guy. People ask me this. Anybody not like your impression? Paul Lynn from Hollywood Squares. You know, absolutely he, detested my impression. And I, I know that there's a chapter in your book uh, about Paul. You know, he was yeah. as as funny and as big as he was. He was hiding so much. Oh and yeah. And he was oh. such a sad figure. In fact, Karen, very I think, sad. Um, I was at his house the day he died. I mean, oh that's my just. God. Yeah, that's I was insane. sent to interview him. Really. And we were knocking on doors and looking oh in gosh. windows, and he didn't answer. Nobody answered. And I said, I don't think anybody's home. I'm not and home. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> that is so irreverent so, and beautiful I know. at the same so, time. So we went back to the studio, and we walked into the offices, and they said, uh, we hate to tell you, but the news just came on. Paul Lynn is dead. Oh, and I said, we oh, were just wow. at his house. And they said, well, he was dead in it. I went, oh, he was so oh, talented, yeah. but so talented. he was so his troubled. own worst enemy, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, he, Paul he was, was never a happy man, Mm-mm. never. He he was in the wrong era. If he would be in today's mainstream, he would be accepted, and he and he'd be fine. Maybe. He was he, he was so. You know, sometimes after the the, the dinner break, you know, we do we do three shows Hollywood Squares, and then have a dinner break and do two more. And by the time we did the last two, Paul was stoned out of his yeah, mind. Gone. Yeah. They had to strap him sometimes into the chair. Oh, yeah, I, I, I did hear that, and he still was funny. Yeah. You know, I mean, Paul, can you get an elephant drunk? <laughs> oh, sure, but you'll never get it up to your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> this is that, that quick win. I and mean, just quick like that. I wanted to talk to both of you uh, about this, because, Karen, you've shared some intimate stories about stars not at their best. But Hollywood used to look away when, like, when Judy Garland... Um, uh, and Rita Hayworth, you know, Rita Hayworth, uh, unfor- you know, got sick towards the end of her life. The media kind of just let things, mm-hmm. people did their job. They were professionals, not like nowadays. We have a young star that they're high and so they can't show up or they're on uh, camera falling down. But Hollywood used to have this sense of respect. Let them have their Well, people weren't glued life. to their cell phones back then either. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, exactly. What, what do you think the difference is? Um, have, have actors gotten... Is unclassy or even a word? Or what do you think the shift in, even with our presidency, it used to be, oh, that's a Hollywood legend coming in, to now it's like, oh, that's a mess. We've seen them falling out of their limo. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Well, the stars of the 40s and 50s were larger than life, and uh, they were easy to do. I mean, not easy, but relatively easy for me because uh, they were always the same. And, um, you know, the actors of today... uh, um, don't ha- we don't have the voices like we used to, you know. Right. Uh, I mean, how do you imitate uh, George Clooney or how do you do Matt Damon or how do you do Brad Pitt? There's nothing that distinct. I mean, I'd no, rather do no Angelina Jolie no to tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd yeah. never be lonely. Also, would I? I think... You would never be lonely. You'd have 20 kids in your bed. Yeah. Two, Not myself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There was a studio system <laughs> back then that yeah. had rules and you don't break them. So you behave... You don't go out of your house to the market looking like a slob. Right. You don't get on. I t- was with Lana Turner. We went to Spain. And she, you don't, if you're going to look great, you change on the plane into something comfortable. Right. But before you get off that plane, you right. go change back into the yeah. whatever they're going to see you in. Look when like you, get you on, are. Look like <laughs> Lana Turner. Right. Do you think the press was a little bit more respectful back then, too? I mean, there were still tabloids, oh, but they sure. weren't like yeah, they are now. Yeah, a lot more. Yeah. yeah oh, a lot yeah. Look more. At, now look they're at, looking for the bad. Look at Kennedy, for heaven's sake. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. everything. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Rich, what makes you think of a voice um, and say, oh, I'm, I, I want to do that voice? Is it that you love the actor so much that you want to emulate him? Yeah, that's him? part of it. What's your process? Do you sit and just listen? Like, I would love to know, do you sketch anything out? Like, what is your process when you say, oh, I'm going to do this Just voice? listen over and over and over. That's what I'm doing with Donald Trump. I'm trying to get the subtleties, as you mentioned earlier. It's the little things yeah. that make the impression, you know. And I was thinking when she was talking about Judy Garland, I can do Jimmy Gar- uh, Judy Garland. I've never done her professionally, but I, I think I can imitate her. <laughs> really? The road gets rougher. <laughs> you know, yes. That, that kind of yeah. the tremor. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a shakiness actually in her voice as she yes, got older. There was a lot of vibrato in her voice. I used to do her. her. Yeah. I used to do and, her. And in as she show. got older, it get it get get more. Oh more yeah, vibrato, yes. But which is funny because her passion took over more towards the end too. I mean, her uh, somewhere with the rainbow towards the end of her career versus the first. I mean, it was yeah. just there was yeah, just so much happening in her life. It meant two different things. Yeah, you know, in the yeah, beginning yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. All because of the man <laughs> that got away. <laughs> Speaking of your singing, I wanted to play a clip. It's so enchanting. Um, it's you uh, with Bing Crosby. Ah, uh, I love um, Bing. And I wanted to know you love Bing. I've heard. I, that, I've heard mixed Bing. things about No, no, Bing. no. That's all rubbish. Okay. Bing was one of the nicest people I have ever met in show business. All this bit about beating his children and everything, total rubbish. Gary Crosby, who was an alcoholic, wrote that book, doesn't remember writing it. And Philip, mm. the other son, said it's hogwash. Bing was a great father. A little strict, but a great father. This clip is so charming to me, and to see you, uh, I mean, Bing is having such a great time. And What I love about all the legends that you performed with, they have, it looks like they're having more fun with you. I mean, like, you're performing. I was very they're... nervous doing this. But, look at this. Or would you rather be a fish? <laughs> a fish won't do anything but swim in a boat. Bing's voice never changed, by the way. No, never. Crystal clear. No. To fool the people, that's his only thought. Though he's slippery, he still gets caught But then if that sort of life is what you wish You might grow up to be a fish And all the monkeys aren't in the zoo What an honor. Every day yeah. you meet quite a fool You don't look nervous at all. So you see, it's all up to you You can be better than you are You could be swinging on a star Nice. Wow. It's funny. Uh, if, uh, watch that clip in you know, its entirety. It's, it's a long. I was so clip. nervous doing that, you wouldn't believe. I'm no, a, you wouldn't I'm not believe really it. A singer by watching and, it. And I, I fluffed a couple of takes, and I, I was really getting more nervous because I'd fluffed it a couple of times. Guess what? On the next take, Bing he fluffed, fluffed it, on yeah. purpose. Oh, oh, wow. And to settle me down. In other words, that's yeah, a gentleman. I goofed, that's, nice. that's a gentleman and a professional. Too. That's and he did. nice. Um, go to YouTube and look up Rich Little Bing Crosby. That clip is actually seven plus minutes. Oh, wow. You wow. guys, you go through so many impressions and you uh, you go through so many different Well, he songs. did an impression of Carol Channing here. What I, d- I did the voice. The, the, yeah, you could tell that he, he was... Uh, Lip syncing. Yes, which yep. is great. Um, but it was it was so many songs that you did. What was the rehearsal process like? What I hear from the old days is people showed up for rehearsal, didn't show up for rehearsal. How did everybody perform at the top of their level back then? Now we see people lip syncing and they're still doing awful performances. Well, I did it in the studio with uh, Stand In doing Bing about a hundred times. Oh, okay. oh. And then I think Bing ran through it with me once. Once. That's, that's so oh. crazy to me. That's that's. He didn't need much rehearsal, Bing. You know, I, I wanted to play another uh, great performance and just showing like like who you perform with. This is you with Sammy Davis Jr. And oh, Sammy yeah. Davis Jr. has such fun in this clip. It's so enchanting where you guys both do Dean Martin. And I didn't know Sammy Davis uh, oh, did he, a he mean was a good Dean impression. Martin. Good, yeah. uh, this is on the Julie Andrews show. Of course, she's oh, in the middle gosh. like, I can sing too. <laughs> 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 so fun. And then Jerry Lewis, of course. I want to tell you something. You and me, we're going to be fighting. That's great. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw it in your first Martin and Lewis together again. We're going to be pals. Well, now, 
out just a second here. Let's try a little transition. Wow. Tempo to a tune. Kind of great. <laughs> here we are. We're definitely out of cigarettes. <laughs> But you see, wow. uh, these huge stars, did you ever get stage... You know, I know you were nervous. How did you handle your stage fright? Um, as I said earlier, I just settled myself down. I kept talking to myself. And then do you think that it was almost double duty? Because when I think of impressionists, I think, well, not only do you have the pressure on you to do an immaculate impersonation of whomever you're doing, but then you also have to make a joke. It's like yeah. double duty. You know, like you have to make the people laugh and then also make sure you're doing Did you exactly... write your jokes down before? Well, like on the Dean Martin roast, right? Um, uh, they tell you who they're going to roast. And if you didn't know anybody that that well, like Joan Collins, you know, right. uh, they would write material for me. I would go through it and say, oh, I like that joke. I like that. I don't like that. And then I might add something of my own. So it, it was about a 50-50 thing, you know. Um, sometimes they wrote good stuff and sometimes they didn't. But, you know, the thing about doing the Dean Martin roast was that you're, you know, you're standing up in front of the greats of Hollywood. I mean, you look over to your right and you see Jack Benny and George Burns and Lucille Ball and John Wayne. And, you know, you look the other way and there's big names, too. So, you know, the pressure was incredible. Did you ever use um, your talents to mimic uh, a, a celebrity for your own personal gain? Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. I, I, I remember once I, went, I had to get on a flight um, and, and they were overbooked. <laughs> So I phoned up as Cary Grant. Oh God! Oh, <laughs> and they got it me immediately on the on the flight. Fantastic. Speaking of Cary Grant, I said Rich uh, Rich Little would be picking up my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I just literally got the chills. Oh, <laughs> got the chills. your heart just Funny. stopped. No, it did. Uh, Cary Grant, uh, talk about. Uh, oh, she likes my yeah. Cary Grant. Yeah, I love his Cary. I Grant. would love to hear more of your Cary Grant. In fact, um, I think our our amazing uh, guest co-host Karen Cato has a little. Um, um, an affair to remember. I've had Which, many affairs, but I don't remember any of them, yeah. just so you know. Okay. <laughs> well, Karen, tell us about the scene that we're, you guys are going to recreate for us right now. I've seen Affair to Remember 21 times. Okay. And uh, I think Rich and I, one night, we c almost did the scene without a piece of paper. I'm so excited. It's my favorite movie in life. And the last scene of the movie is heartbreaking and killer. You need lots of Kleenex. But they met on a ship, and uh, they were both engaged to somebody else. <laughs> and uh, there's a line in the movie that he meets her before they're going to get off the ship, and he says, where will you be? Well, what does he say? Well, I'm, 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 I'm worried about the future. I don't know what people will think. They'll say, there he goes, that mad painter. There's something the matter with him. He doesn't like women. Well, why would they say that? Well, because he sails the seven seas, and every woman he meets, he says... Where will you be in six months? And they're there? Everywhere. Tops of pyramids, domes of cathedrals, the Eiffel Tower. He still tries to keep them up high. He keeps them waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And where is he all this time? Under the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> anyway... Yeah. I mean, yeah, I getting know. Getting a goosebumps, I... tears. No, under the Statue emotional. of Liberty. Yeah, <laughs> waiting. Waiting, waiting in the rain. Waiting. Yeah. It's a great movie. It's 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 a, a, it's a movie. soapy movie, you know. Yeah. But it's but it's, it's pretty works. good. Except for its time, it it it, it, no, works. it works. And it's just yeah. it's, it just that were, was that was that was intense. That, 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 that was, was intense. Uh, in, intense. Rich, do people come up to you all the time and try to do their impressions, even oh, if they yeah. think they're being funny? Oh, yeah. Do you have any advice for, for those people who come up to you with their impressions or, 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 or young budding I impersonators now? What, any advice you would give them? Yeah, get your own voices. Your don't, own. don't do the ones that everybody does. Get somebody new. You know, when I hear somebody do uh, somebody that's never been done before, I, I go, wow, that's pretty darn good. You know, Christopher Walken, uh, Gordy Brown up in Vegas does him. Yeah. And, Al Pacino, you know, and and De Niro. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really. Well, I can do them, but not as well as Gordy. Gordy, Gordy Gordy's Brown is great. great. But and that's what really made your career was doing different voices. Yeah, I was doing Fred McMurray and Lloyd Bridges that you saw, and I was doing. Well, you turned your Sterling Hayden and all these. Uh, you had a body. Andrews, yeah, Glenn Ford. But you do one I've never heard anybody do, and that's Doctor Phil. 
Doc, Dr. Phil, I know. Yeah, I know wow. that, 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 that you know that I know. <laughs> and if you knew that, then we both would know if we knew it all when we knew it. <laughs> now we just need you a Shelly the ball. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. Rich. <laughs> we both. That oh. was scary. <laughs> Rich, when you're uh, all around the nation, all around the globe, performing, performing, how do you know? Because... You know, you perform, you're tired, you're not really like in the current events every day. How do you know when to retire some voices? And what is the voice that you've had to retire for, for, for uh, you know, an amount of time that, that you miss? Well, I, I don't do Spiro Agno much anymore. Oh, God. You know? yeah. <laughs> or Hubert Humphrey. <laughs> Those were popular voices way back in the 70s, you know? Yeah. So how, how do you know as, as, as a as Well, a if politicians... And as soon as they uh, disappear, you know, like Hillary will, right? Hopefully, uh, <laughs> uh oh. Anyway, and that is all for our no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you, you know where my leanings are. <laughs> I've always been a Republican. Uh, well, I'm not really a Democrat or a Republican. I eat like an elephant and lie like a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> but you know voices do fade away there's no question about it if you're not in the limelight i can remember running into johnny carson uh, after he retired just about two years before he passed away in a restaurant in malibu and he came up to me in the restaurant he said rich are are you are you are you still doing me i said yeah i do you in my act you're you're kidding Be, people remember me i said of course they do john oh, i i I thought when I, you know, I stepped down as, as host of the Tonight Show, I, I would be forgotten, and I said, no, you'll never be forgotten, Johnny. And I, it's true, I'm still doing them. Mm -hmm. You know, he thought he thought because he wasn't on TV, that he's he would very just fade much away, still relevant. You know? well, hello, yeah. I mean, absolutely. And, and talk about you can't just erase Hollywood. history. I the mean. Tonight Show is is I mean, there's no late show that that captures that. And if you watch him on on old reruns, which well, they're we, showing, we, we you have, see how good he is. He mm -hmm. is the best talk he, show host ever yeah he always had his moment uh when you got to see the real where he broke character and really laughed like judy garland you know what the, she got the giggles yeah. when you performed with her like a little girl and i have a beautiful if you're going to do one line to johnny carson you know what it would be i i did I did not know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I just want to play this clip um, from The Tonight Show. You guys have such a beautiful uh, banter, and you guys are talking about Ed Sullivan, which is so funny, which is... What uh, happened to that blue suit? You had a yeah, I was going to say, you had immaculate style. Well, I mean, I all the Ricardo suits that you were... On, all the suits. <laughs> wow. Did you have a stylist? or No, I, no. no not really. I love that suit. Oh, didn't have yeah. A Ed was. yeah. I said he's a big so star. they're talking about Ed Sullivan. What do they do? They said... I wonder what Ed's doing now, Sunday night. You think he's standing around in New York? But it's like you guys are really just hanging around. out and talking. It's going to be such a habit, you know. <laughs> Ed uh, is the only man I've ever met who can count up to three and get <laughs> two of the numbers wrong. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, which is easy. <laughs> the sad thought about it is there are a lot of bears standing in unemployment lines <laughs> around the country waiting, no, you he, know. He needs uh, people to follow him around writing him day-to-day -day conversations. <laughs> I mean, what was the bit? Oh, yeah, somebody came up to Ed Sullivan on the street because he reads everything and uh, said, Hello, Mr. Sullivan. Ed would probably look over their shoulder and say, Don't walk. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, Johnny, look at Johnny, who's reacting God. to you. He's reacting to you on such a... He's a lovely man, and Ed Sullivan is one of the people in the business who loves people to do impressions. The first night... I hope so. First, oh, no, he does. He's got a great sense of humor, and it, because it is a compliment when somebody does you, obviously, if you're well enough known to do... You have to be flattered unless you do a cruel impression. I've never seen you do that. But the first shot I ever did on the Ed Sullivan show <laughs> was Ed calling because I had done a, a takeoff on his old toast of the town, and that was my first big network shot was on his show. You know, the first show I ever did with him, he gave me a great build-up. Young impersonator from Canada, fine youngster. So welcome out here, Buddy Rich. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, you, but but you, you guys just had such a beautiful respect for each other. What was uh, performing on like a like a, a show on Ed Sullivan, the Judy Garland show? What's the lead up when you know you have your small little window? What were your dressing room uh, must haves? Um, you know, one time I did. Uh, I've done this over the years. I was a record as a, a stage play, uh, Christmas Carol. Uh -huh. You know where I play all the parts. Mm -hmm. One time I did a Christmas Carol on the Ed Sullivan show, right? Now, it's a long story with a lot of spirits that visit Scrooge, you know, on Christmas Eve. 
And um, he wanted me to do it in four minutes. Oh, gosh. So I thought, gosh, you know, four minutes. So I really had to just take the, you know, just a little bit of the plot and just cram it all in. And then he came to me just before the taping. He said, Ricardo. I said, Ed, I'm not Spanish. I know. <laughs> I know you're not. I said, Ricardo, uh, we're, we're going to have to cut you down to three minutes. Oh, my God. And I went, three minutes now to do a Christmas carol? He said, I'm sorry, but we, we're, we've, we've overbooked. Three minutes. I said, Ed, you've seen the routine. How can I do a Christmas carol in three minutes? He said, why don't you take Scrooge out of it? Oh. <laughs> what? Hi. What? You know, he, was, he was a strange man. You know, he, he was one sandwich short of a picnic. You know? you know? The wheel was spinning, but the rodent was dead. I can tell you that. You know? Well, Rich, to piggyback on that, too, I also understand that you've put your talent to s filling in for celebrities on yes. soundtracks yeah. and everything like that. So how I've does that the a number of times? Yeah. How does the prep for something like that differ from, a, a, you know, a, a, a Christmas Carol performance where you play all the characters? How does, how well, does that Well, if you're differ? dubbing for a movie, yeah. you know, either the star has passed away or uh, lost their voice. I once did a... I did a Christmas special one time as Gene Kelly. <laughs> now, Gene Kelly had kind of a high voice like this, and I, I had to lip sync him for the whole show. And I did that. I did Tony Curtis for a movie he walked off on. So then anytime you have Can to I do... Can I hear a little of your Tony Curtis? Oh, I've Tony never... Curtis. Oh. Uh, well, I, I, I finished this movie. He walked off this movie. He didn't get paid. It was some Italian epic. And... Um, they asked me to, to, to do some looping, you know, so they could release the movie. And I did it. And Tony said, D -d -d did you get paid? Oh, and I said, yeah, they paid me. Are you kidding? They paid you and they didn't pay me. I said, well, they did pay me. He said, well, I think you owe me half of it. That sounds just like him. Rich, in I, I love you, Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one always gets... I wish that was my ringtone. Like, I literally wish... <laughs> Um, of all the legends you met, what was uh, the best experience and what was the worst experience? Uh, of all the celebrities I've met, yep. Um, the best, uh, the best experience was doing the first Reagan inauguration, and um, I show this in my show. If you see me at the Tropicana, um, I did the presidents right, and I did um, um, Gerald Ford. Now. Nobody knew that the podium I used was made out of cork. It wasn't made out of wood, but you, you couldn't tell. You thought it was wood. And, of course, when I um, hit the podium as Gerald Ford, it just disintegrated into pieces. Okay? <laughs> and when I did that, Reagan lost it. He fell on the floor screaming with laughter. I mean, that was one of the greatest moments to see Reagan, you know, laughing so hard that he had tears streaming down his his face because of uh, Gerald Ford, you know, falling. I once did that down in Palm Springs too, in front of Gerald Ford. Same bit, right? This was a a, a benefit for um, for Betty Ford down in Palm Springs, and there was uh, Gerald Ford sitting in front and Frank Sinatra right next to him. And of course, I had the podium made out of cork. They didn't know that, right? I hit the podium. This is true. I hit the podium too hard. Cork went everywhere. Millions of pieces of cork, right? And and it and then I fell off the stage. I fell off the stage. Grabbed the microphone. Fell off the stage. Landed in Gerald Ford's lap. Okay. Now, as soon as I saw I hadn't killed him, I put the microphone up to his lips, and 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 he went, whoops, and. Frank, Frank was pounding the floor. He was screaming with laughter. And I remember when I left that, that, that benefit, and we were waiting for our cars to be brought around after, I was shaking hands with President Ford and Frank Sinatra. I noticed they still had cork on their heads. <laughs> You know, but that was a great moment. Oh my God! Oh my I thought God. I killed the president. I really oh. did. Can you imagine? <laughs> so be good. Glenn Ford said, "Rich, your car is still <laughs> facing north." <laughs> and you know, we, we love to hear real stories, um, gritty stories. What, what was one of the most disappointing meetings that, that that you've had, or one of the celebrity run-ins that probably was something not that left a bad um, taste in your mouth? Um, Tony Randall. No. Oh, oh my God. He didn't like my impression. <laughs> All of us. All of us. A what? collective, oh, God. He'd say, Rich, 
I saw you do me last <laughs> evening on The Tonight Show, and it was pathetic. <gasps> you can't wow. imitate me because I have perfect pitch. Mm. And I didn't know what that meant. But he said, you've missed it completely. Um, wow. It just was a bad impression, and it's not your fault. But uh, don't don't ever do it again. You know. oh, Ouch. Ouch. Uh, yeah, you know, ouch. I don't know whether you know him, knew him or not. Did you know him? Yeah. Yeah? A little bit. Yeah. Well, he just didn't like my impression, and um, that's okay. Well, you know, yeah. so, so some people are just yeah. defensive when they hear th- yeah. themselves. Um, get a, get, some people get a are crap, just, you know what I mean? It's, some it's people okay. are just defensive. Yeah. yeah. Well, and what I love what Johnny said in that clip was that you've never been mean with your in- impressions. No. Try not to be. Rich, I have to I'm, I have to know from a current standpoint, what do you watch on TV? What movies do you go to? Mm. What actors do you look look towards like and after yeah. seeing everybody do these amazing films, what are, where do you well, participate I think, in and out? Uh, Brian Cranston, I think, is one of the best so actors. So good. Trumbo was Trumbo. such yeah. a good come film. Along. Well, yeah. Breaking Bad. Yeah, I was, was going to say phenomenal. Breaking Bad yeah. was Breaking the Bad series was of, yeah. And uh, I, I like his work. And he, and he does real people, too, right. like Dalton Trumbo. And, yeah. Uh, he did. Uh, he did Lyndon Johnson. And I oh, saw that was an interesting film. Him. Not my favorite, but he I did a great job. I saw him on the stage do it in on Broadway. Oh. I actually passed up the opportunity to see that, and I wish that I didn't. Oh, you had to go see oh, Rent we, for oh, like a no, no, no. It, I, there was some sort of conflict. He, he had yeah. it down. You know, it's interesting. You remember the the movie Dalton Trombo that he made? Yes. Well, he studied Dalton Trombo's voice and did it. I mean, magnificent that impression. Was a beautiful but nobody film. knew that what he sounded film. like. He didn't yeah. have to. Yeah. But he did because he's that kind of a guy. You know, he probably listened to tapes of Dalton Trombo. Over Everybody's and over. at home going, who's Dalton Trombo? You know? I thought some of the other characters on in that movie weren't that great. The John Wayne wasn't particularly good. And uh, some of the other. But I, I shouldn't be critical, you know. Rich, Whenever I, I see somebody do, uh, like I saw the... Uh, the you know, the uh, Killing Reagan um, uh, TV show that uh, Bill O'Reilly's book was based on. And um, I auditioned for it, and they turned me down. They said, no, we, we want an actor. So um, oh, I didn't get it. And I watched it. I watched some of it. And I thought, if the guy does them well, okay, I'll be the first to say, great. 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 Yeah. But he didn't. And so I just, you know, took my cyanide and went to bed. <laughs> 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 Rich, after a show, when you've been all these characters, what is your ritual when you're done with the How show? How do you unwind? Yeah. Well, sometimes I get so into Dean Martin, you know, when I'm on stage, they have to carry me. <laughs> I <trust you. laughs> uh, I, I, sometimes I do Johnny Carson, and I become Johnny, and I find myself later on writing out an alimony check for some reason. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't understand why. But you see, Johnny and I had a lot in common. We were both married four times. That's true. And at each one of our weddings, they they threw minute rice, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and they didn't take it out of the box. <laughs> That's actually one of my questions. Do you think it's um, do you think it's possible to have a family and also be uh, a top entertainer? Oh sure, sure. You know, um, it's tough though. You know, uh, a lot of suicides from big stars. They're 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 uh, you know some. Some of their son, the sons or daughters commit suicide. You can understand why, because they can't live up to their father. You know, and uh, it's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Yeah, it's tough to be the son or daughter of a big, big star like Gregory Peck's son. I think committed suicide, and oh, there's been many. You know, and um, I have two daughters, and uh, one of them uh, lives in Malibu, and. Uh, we're very close, and then I have another one up in um, in Vegas. So in Vegas, so Karen, you just saw his show last week. I so did. so this show is different than your others in in what sense? Tell us yeah, about well, it a little when bit. I did the the one man show on Jimmy Stewart, and uh, you know I did a whole show on Jimmy Stewart, and um, I did that for for five years, hoping to go to Broadway, and never did, but came close. And a lot of people said, you know, we love your your show on Jimmy Stewart. Uh, you know, doing his life story, but what about Rich Little? Why don't yeah. you do your own life story? And I said, wait a minute, I'm not yeah. big enough 
to do a life story on. Of course you are. I said, no, no, I'm no Jimmy Stewart. And they said, no, you're no Jimmy Stewart, but you've had an interesting life and met a lot of great people. Do a show on your life. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing a show. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of a clips. On, on my a lot life. of fantastic You, you mentioned clips. there were some fabulous clips. A lot, clips, lot yeah. of new clips that I've never seen. But not new clips, but cl new clips for your show. I've never seen you use as many. Well, one of the great, greatest clips that I, that I got in the show, and I didn't even know it existed. It was on a Dean Martin roast where John Wayne came up to the mic. He said, I guess you noticed the way I walked up here. My name was John Wayne. <laughs> well, it's not. It's Rich Little. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. That's so I compliment. use that. Isn't that great? Um, uh, we've we have heard, Vegas we've plans. Heard, uh, yeah, Vegas we will plans. be in Vegas. Yeah. Um, we've heard so many, just the tip of the iceberg. I didn't want to recount the stories in the book, so I'm telling all of our, all of our listeners uh, an intimate uh, retelling of your career and these amazing stories. And Amazon, all your sketches, Amazon. right? Amazon.com is where you can get the book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all those sketches, most of the sketches all in the, the book are yours, are right? There's about 30 in there. Wow. Um, it's 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 just a wealth. Um, little by little, you people have known hold, and, and hold been. the sketches up to the microphone yeah, for you people should. that are listening. You should. <laughs> <laughs> we're on video now, sweetie. All right. Oh, we are on video. It's That's not for right. Helen Keller anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, 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 we're full blowing. Howard, um, Howard counts so. now. <laughs> you know what Howard said to me one time? <laughs> Rich, if you Sam. can talk in my voice 24 <laughs> hours a day, there's no degree that greatness you could not obtain in the world of show business. And I said, Howard, you're full of it. Well, probably, but I'm a big star. You're bigger. What I have to say, and this is just from a performer's aspect, you know, as singers, uh, all the three of us are, are singers, as you are yourself, um, sometimes when we don't, like, feel up to it, we can fake it. We can not belt it, but, like, soft note it or interpret it differently. When you do an impression, you have to hit every note right on pitch otherwise it doesn't ring true for the audience how exhausting must that be and what happens to you when you feel just tired for a night and you're well, like sometimes oh. if you look like the person i've seen people do impressions where they really look like the person they're doing maybe the voice isn't that good but because you look like them it sounds better and it works in reverse too you know, it enhances sometimes the whole Sometimes if you experience. do the impression, the voice, so well, people will say, I swear I was looking at Raymond Burr, you know? And I can't look like Raymond Burr, but, you know. It, you know, it took about four of you to look like Raymond Burr. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Raymond Burr, <laughs> Harry Mason. I remember when I was learning to do his voice uh, for a show I did called Copycats. Oh, and a I big, really, uh, I, a I, little I, show, a big. Yeah, I watched. Yeah. I watched a lot of Perry Masons, and I noticed with Raymond Burr, you have to do the breathing thing, right? He goes because he was Paul, heavy, and that's how he breathes. Mm -hmm. Take this gun down to ballistics and check it for fingerprints. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> I do believe <laughs> we found our murderer. <laughs> so when I first met him, he said, "Rich." You do a pretty good impression of me. <laughs> I said, yes, but I was just wondering why you breathe like that at the end of all your sentences, Mr. Burr. He said, well, keep myself alive. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Uh, well, he, was having, he would never be on Law & Order nowadays. You know, uh, it's all no, like it quick. Be. It's too fast. Have you ever thought about insuring your voice? Because it's... It, wow. It's everything. Yeah. That you, yeah, yeah, with Lloyd's of London. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> years ago. Mary Hart had her legs uh, oh, yeah. a million dollars. Yeah, well, it was going to cost about a million dollars, you know. Oh, at uh, least. One time, one time, somebody took some pictures of my vocal cords mm -hmm. and uh, oh, wanted to see if they were going to yeah. be different than anybody else's. That's interesting. And we noticed when, when I got the pictures back that there were little people on the vocal cords. <laughs> <laughs> little faces. <laughs> little faces. Yes, little Truma Capote <laughs> and a, little Mickey Rooney, <laughs> little <laughs> tiny people on the... <laughs> we are in the holidays. I have a special treat. Um, you were on the Perry Como show. Perry Como is so special yeah. to me and my family. I love Perry Como. All of his Perry records. Como. My grandma used to be, Perry Comito. We have a, <laughs> we have a blooper from the Perry uh, Como show. It's very oh, sweet. Good. It's this little girl speaks out of turn when you're doing your bit. It's so sweet. And then oh, yeah. um, when we come back, uh, we're going to rapid fire you, and Karen Cadle's going to do it in in oh a classy gosh. style. That True Hollywood Karen style. Knows. Yes, yes, yes. Let's oh, watch this. Gosh, I'm going to do the Invisible Man next. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are. A doll is very expensive. Perry Como. See what I can That's do. Jack Benny. I love it. Hi, Santa. Oh, Perry Como. Oh, hello, little boy. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. It's Santa Jack, the original. <laughs>
old blue eyes Spot on. back. <laughs> well, I never thought I'd see Jack Benny as Santa Claus. Never. <laughs> well, I'm a change man, Perry. I love it. And you know, I can hardly wait on Christmas Eve to come down the chimney and wake up all those little kids and see if they want to buy some toys. <laughs> <laughs> she just, just, just comes out of it. You know, that's a there was a yeah, little kid that was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Bum. broke Perry up. That's funny. Yeah. yeah, that little kid said, Buy some Buy toys. Some toys. Oh, that that's... made the scene, didn't it? Oh, adorable. Mr. Little, we have a basket full of deplorables. No, just kidding. <laughs> These are questions uh, that were uh, not written by, but became known as Marcel Proust questions and if you can answer all of these honestly you're supposed to know who you are love ah. it so Th- this you is can where the answer, classic comes from you can pick out a question and answer it as yourself or if you choose to choose a character to answer it you could do that if you feel safe and they're serious mm-hmm. okay did i write them all no you didn't write any of them <laughs> marcel proust <laughs> wrote them you want to oh, do boy. you dare it's it's i did this with robert wagner and he was scared <laughs> to death robert. You can answer it as a character if you want to take it away from you. What is the quality you most like in a woman? Oh, okay. That should be easy. Well, Well. (laughs) (laughs) it would help if she had money. (laughs) Perfect. You know, because I've been married three times. Try it again. One more. Well. That was Two more. Two more. Two more. Oh, yes. Two more. Please. Sorry. Okay. I hope they're not. Did you two. write all these? No. If you were to die and come back as a person or a thing, what would it be? Well, that's good. Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, if I were to die and come back as a person or a thing, a thing. A thing, yeah. You, uh, what would it be? It could be a dog, you know, could be a cat. <laughs> could be Carol Channing. You could be Carol Channing. <laughs> Yes, I, I come back as Carol Shannon. <laughs> yeah, I just love Carol uh. Shannon. She's, I mean, she's so larger than life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and she's still doing this. Yeah, she works at the subway now in Palm Springs. No, just, yeah, hey, kidding. She's a huge star, and, and yeah. she's. Uh, I'm so enchanted. I by worked with her at the Sands Hotel in Vegas. This is a true story. What was her backstage like? Oh, she was great. She had a great sense of humor and everything. Uh, we worked together, and I did my Carol Channing with her, and we sang, right? And, and that's my agent wondering if I oh. was paid. Um, <laughs> it's Tony Randall. <laughs> it's Tony, like you were it's paid. Tony Randall. Rich, you're still <laughs> pathetic. Um, anyway, I, who's... who's it off. Uh, it's off. Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I worked with Carol Channing at the uh-huh. Desert Inn, right? And um, Is it you? She said to me, Rich, let's go over to Caesar's Palace <laughs> after the show. There's a lounge act that I think we should see. And I said, fine, Carol. All right. When I finish, let's go. I'll get ready now. You know, she, she got all dolled up, guess, you know. Yep. And we walked over to Caesar's, right? Well, we're walking through the lobby. This is a true story. And some guy stops us and goes, Carol Channing. This, um, you're, uh, God, who are you, fella? This is the best Carol Channing I've ever seen. Are you with La Cage Are you with Frank Marino? Are you with Frank Marino? Listen, I've never seen a better Carol Channing. You look exactly like her. My God, fella, who are you? And Carol said, I'm a truck driver from Toledo, <laughs> and I'm just here for a convention. <laughs> and then we walked away. And the oh, guy went, uh, we looked back and the guy was going, boy, that's a great Carol oh, Channing. Okay. But this is like, that's the quick wit from old Hollywood. Stars nowadays cannot no, respond they, to no, that. No. All right, Rich, you did the classy version of Rapid Fire. Now you need to do ours. Uh-oh. All right. Film role you wish you would have uh, created? A what? film role. Film role. Um, I wish I'd done uh, the movie Nixon. But unfortunately, they had a better actor, Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. But you, I was on the set to give him some pointers. Oh, I don't you know were? Why. I don't know why. I could, you can't give Anthony Hopkins any pointers. But I was honored to be, to be there when he did his Nixon. And, uh, but, but, you know, the, the thing about it is that nobody ever considers me for these parts. Yeah. You know? Well, we need to spread the word. Well, no, they, what they think is he's a comedian. So this yeah. is right. a serious right. thing. We, we can't use him because he's a comic, you know? And... Um, 
I, I would have loved to have played that. Frank Langella played it, but uh, yeah. I would have loved to have played that. All right. If you could marry a fictional character from one of your favorite movies, who would it be and why? Oh, my God. That's a good question. Well, when I was a kid, I had a big crush on Gene Tierney. Remember The Razor's Edge? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's and, a very uh, subtle Laura, answer. Laura. Laura. And I yeah. met her later Ooh. on with Cesar Romero. At a, at a well, he lunch, wasn't fighting you for at her. At a lunch <laughs> yeah. years later, and I was so thrilled to meet her. You know, of course, by that time, she'd, well, she wasn't like she was when, well, yeah. who is like? It's they fun to meet your 20, crushes. I, I just thought she was a gorgeous woman. Gorgeous woman. Rich, one impression that you're asked to do over and you're like, Ugh, mm. again. Well, it's a lot uh, Probably of... Richard Nixon. Mm. Mm. Okay. I get a little tired once in a while of doing <laughs> Richard Nixon. Uh, all right, but, Richard. Um, Ooh, sorry. There's money in it. Oh, sorry. There's money in it. We don't have to interrupt <laughs> Mr. Nixon. Um, you, you can have one of the following things. What would you pick? Love or trust? Ooh. Love or trust? Ooh, wow. Well, wow. love can be trust, huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, it should be I the mean, same thing. I mean, not necessarily. Uh, love or trust? Um, well, you've trust, probably. Same. Yeah, Me yeah. too. Yeah. You're told you have to fly tonight and perform in New York City, and you can only take three things for your dressing room before. What are those three things? Uh, George Burns glasses and cigar. You really have his glasses? <laughs> My Willie Nelson braids. Yeah. <laughs> You're props. kidding. Props. <laughs> props. Yeah, props. <laughs> and my Jack Benny glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Come. Those are the only props I use, by the way. I thought it would be like a rosary and like a picture and like something. Oh, no, no, no. I see. Oh, I see. Something personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I would take uh, probably um, pictures of my kids. Yeah, my two daughters. Yeah. Um, and then I have, would you rather live in a huge house in the suburbs or a tiny apartment in a city with excellent views? Hmm. Well, if it's right next to the theater I'm working, I'll take the, the one apartment. in the city. But yeah. you know. Do you hear that, Pantages? Do it. <laughs> yeah. Rich will let the Pantages. There you go. We need it. We're like. so blessed that he's here and not in Vegas. It's, right. we're, we're so blessed and honored to have everyone in this room that we have yes. right now. It's been well, a, I hope a, I haven't a, a hogged too much of the show. I it's mean, your show. It's, Hello. No, no, not really. Come Rich, on. Rich, our, our final rapid fire. What is your favorite thing about show business? One favorite thing? Uh, meeting. The people that I admired as a kid, not only meeting them, working with them, and getting to know them. That's the yeah, me biggest too. thrill same of my, my career. Same answer. The people I've met. And then well, final, final question. No, yeah. Will both of you come back? Absolutely yes, not. Yes. The money was stacked. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't even take our Dr. Peppers, our waters. No, it's, it's just, you no, know. We didn't even get prune juice. <laughs> <laughs> we have to tell you, um, you need to get this book, uh, Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, little by little, people have known and been, and your website is great too, richlittle.com. Thank you. Um, gallery pictures. What an amazing, And if amazing. it's not in the bookstore, it should be. Right. I will yeah, go down right. and fill the, fill the shelves. So Make will a I. call, but here's the thing, you can call and they'll deliver it right to your door. Um, and if you, you know, you, you get it through richlittle.com, I will autograph it for you. Yeah. There, there you, you go. go. That's yeah. incentive. Mine's well, it'll take a little time. Yeah. I'll have to sign it as 200 people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll take some time. That's its own chapter. Just different, <laughs> different signatures. Um, look up Rich Little on Facebook. Uh, go see him at uh, the Tropicana Laugh Factory. We're actually going to gonna make a trip. Out. Absolutely. We will, oh, we will absolutely. And, and we're men there. of our word. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, they are. Mama yeah. Rose, do you have one last thing to say? We see you. Yes, I just wanted to say that there are tons of fans in the chat room, and they're all expressing their love to Rich. Oh, oh nice. That's great. How sweet. Thank you, dear. I appreciate that. All right, that. Mom. Mom, I'll see you later. Mom, we'll okay. call you right after this. Mama Rose, thank you so much. <laughs> Karen Cato, yeah. before it's we... Like, it's like my mother yes. said when I first appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show. What did you think, Mom? I didn't like the tie. <laughs> that's a mom, isn't it? <laughs> that is a mom. That's My a mom, mom will give me notes about everything yeah, that I that's even a think mom. about. <laughs> Karen Kittle, before we go, you have to do your impression of Betty Davis, who please, you had an please. intimate relationship with. Intimate? Her, well, well, not, not, not intimate. intimate. Not, not romantic, intimate. just yeah. intimate. Um, her answering machine, message, you would come home to... I would come home to messages on my machine that were stunning that I never kept, which is stupid. I came home on my birthday once, and Robert Goulet was on my machine and sang the entire song, If Ever, if ever I, I Would, would leave, leave You. you. Oh, that was wow. in a, uh, the whole song for my birthday. Wow. You have a hey. chapter about Robert Goulet. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I like Bob. But uh, I was working with uh, Miss D, 
and which he liked to be called, and uh, not the easiest uh, 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 thing. We once had to. She said, "I had, uh, I have to go to the dentist," and she said, "But I'm not going." Huh? So what does that mean? So she hands you a bag with her teeth in it. No. Oh. Yes. And but I've got a car for you. So you drive to the dentist with her teeth. Betty yeah. Davis took her teeth to That's the dentist. That's crazy. You okay. do the best. But anyway, there I would come home to uh, various voice messages from Miss D, and she rarely spoke in a quiet, calm way. She usually screamed, and uh, she was very frustrated, and she didn't quite get the voicemail. She thought once the phone answered, it was you. So she would call, and it would pick up, and you'd hear my message. And all I heard on my voicemail was, where are you? <laughs> she would scream. That's pretty good, right, Rich? That's a pretty good. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> there, that's better. Pita, pita, pita. But, yeah, she would just scream at me. Yeah. So I, of course, didn't call her back right away. Well, she <laughs> once told the president of the United States, Ronald Reagan, to go to hell. Oh, because well, that would be Betty, yeah. Because of me. Actually, the words were stronger than that, but I'm not going <laughs> to wow. use them. But I had um, That'll be interview too. phoned up Betty Davis as a, as a gag and uh, asked her why she didn't come to the Reagan inauguration. And uh, I did it as Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> so I pretended I was Jimmy Stewart, and she fell for it. And then I said, uh, this is Rich Little, it's not Jimmy Stewart. She was furious. Furious. She screamed yeah. at me. Yeah. I mean, she, she didn't think it was funny at all. So she hung up, and I went, oh, God, that, that didn't work. God, whose idea was that? We now go to the uh, one of the balls, you know, the presidential balls, and we walk in, and we see Jimmy Stewart with Ronald Reagan. And we told him, <laughs> we told him the story. We told him what happened with Betty Davis. I love this. This is so and funny. And Reagan said, well, we'll have to set this straight. <laughs> Uh, I know she's a tough old bird, but uh, she's got a great sense of humor, so let's phone her up. So we did. We got a, oh. a phone in one of the little offices, and uh, he, Reagan said, what's the number? And, uh, and uh, Patricia Neal, who was there, gave, uh, mm. gave Reagan uh, Betty Davis's number, and um, they dialed the number, and, um, and you heard, hello. Hello, Bet. Uh, this is President Reagan. Go to hell, Rich Little. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and hung up. Slam. Yeah, and that it was stronger Betty. than that. I can't use uh, yeah. the real words. It was, you rich little. Yeah, <laughs> yep. From Betty Davis. That would be Betty so Davis. So she never knew. She went to her grave never knowing that she had said that to the, to president, the president of the United, United States. States. Oh, yeah, yeah. These Phenomenal. stories, everything. They're endless. Endless. Go to Karen Cadle in the international. Uh, C a d l e international. Thank you. You do signings uh, with stars I all do. the time. You're all over the place. Cannot wait for your book to be finished. Yeah, it's yeah. good. I got eight chapters done, so I'm on my way. Next time you're here, we'll be talking about your book. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. How exciting. It's good. It's How got exciting. some. Yeah. I reread two chapters today, and I cried all over again. Some of yeah. them are very heartbreaking. Well, you had a very special relationship with Joan Fontaine, I, I know. Um, it's still a little the raw. Most, yeah, very yeah. Raw. It'll always be raw because she was mom. Tough. Thank you. Tough thank you. Bird. Yes. Thank you to our guest, Kurt Carlson. Thank you so much. Uh, next week, we have uh, the group Enigma. Do you remember Enigma? The first album in 10 years, we have the exclusive interview. Um, the songwriter is actually Skyping in from Berlin at 4 a.m. his time. Oh, so that wow. should be interesting. We have Sarah McGinnis, the English pop star. It's all about music next week. Yes. Um, and so we're very excited. Uh, Eric, as always, thank you so much. Thank you, Ben. We are ending the show with another song. What we talked about was just all like connecting our stories together so we have charlene modest charlene where can our listeners find you uh you can find me on facebook <laughs> what is your modest. handle just, just it's your charlene name. modest great yes. Yes. you want me to, I, I put my guitar over here I want to yes it. so uh where are you performing next charlene um i'm not i'm just passing through la um i'm actually going to be up in northern california and you live by the snoopy museum I do live near the Snoopy Museum. How many times have you been there? None. Oh, I'm a huge Charles Schultz my, Peanuts fan, the biggest. All He's all over the place, and, and I promise. I was waiting for you to come up there. No, and Eric and I are coming up, because there's a, there's a local club that you play out sometimes. Yeah, um, uh, there's Sweetwater down in Mill Valley. And we're going to we're gonna bring our show to you. Yes. <laughs> but what are we going to hear now? Um, my latest song, it's a new song that I wrote, um, came to me sometime in October, so it's, it's brand spanking new. 
All right, perfect. Thank you to all of our guests. This is how we're ending our show. Happy holidays. Thank Happy you to holiday. our listeners. Merry Christmas and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all. you, Rich. Good night and God bless. <laughs> 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 this one's called So Much. Home of the brave, land of the free Everybody knows you ain't talking about me, son Ignore my cries for equality Then tell me to go the hell back to where I came from And do so much pain to get over Trying to live while looking over my shoulder Always wondering if I'll be the next one Who starts to trend with their name on a hashtag Or gets mysteriously hung by a trash bag Or has life's last breath shed virally for snuff porn fun Teenage boy gets his blood splattered You let me know our lives don't matter none Your justice ain't blind and neither are we The veil of your duality is undone And ooh, 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 there's so much pain to get over Trying to live while looking over my shoulder Always wondering if I'll be the next one Who starts to trend with the name on a hashtag Or gets mysteriously hung by a trash bag Or has life's last breath shit virally for snuff porn fun Gun down in our churches while we kneel and pray Tell me where's the someday when we finally overcome Talking heads, spinning lies while they deny The demonizing the victims of American terrorism And uh, ooh, ooh, so much pain to get over Trying to live while looking over my shoulder Always wondering if I'll be the next one who starts a trend with the name on a hashtag Or gets mysteriously hung by a trash bag Or has life's last breath shit virally for snuff porn fun Home of the brave, land of the free Everybody knows you ain't talking about me A light way to end. Yes. I know that one. <laughs> That's a great song, though. This has been On the Rocks with Alexander. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Find me on Facebook on On the Rocks Radio Show. Tweet me or Instagram me at On the Rocks On Air. See you next Tuesday.